T to the inverting terminal, the output from this operational amplifier will go high if V ref is greater than V actual. So if I want the voltage to be higher, V ref is bigger than V actual, this will go to a high voltage. If I'm too hot, if V actual is higher than V ref, this voltage will go low. Now, this particular device, any of the operational amplifiers we have in our analog parts kit are relatively low power devices. We can get the voltage range that we need at the output. What we cannot get is the amount of power that we need in order to change this resistor's temperature. So we're going to use this voltage at the gate of a MOSFET to perform a power amplification process. So we'll apply some voltage to the drain of the MOSFET, connect the source of the FET to the power resistor, so when this voltage goes high, we'll start putting current through the drain, that will run through the resistor, that will warm up the resistor and increase the temperature. Now, the actual, we just connect to our temperature measuring system to here. So finally, putting the overall system together, we have three blocks. There's a controller. The controller is accepting as an input from the outside world a voltage indicating the desired temperature. That would be VREF. It's also accepting a voltage indicating the actual temperature, which is VACT. However, VACT is generated from inside your system. It's the output of the temperature measurement system. So the controller takes those two values, makes an on-off decision, either a, provides a high voltage to the resistor or no voltage to the resistor. The resistor's temperature changes as a consequence of that input. The temperature measurement system senses that temperature change and continually updates the controller as to the actual temperature of the resistor. So if the resistor's temperature is too low, if VACT is below VREF, the controller will turn on the voltage to the resistor. The resistor will heat up until V actual gets up to or exceeds V ref. The voltage will turn off and you'll just keep cycling the voltage applied to the resistor on and off to keep the resistor at the desired temperature. Now let's look at the operation of the overall circuit. I've wired the circuit on the EE board. This section here is our plant plus temperature measurement system. This, of course, is our resistor. We're applying a positive voltage here. This terminal is grounded. The thermistor is bonded to the resistor. And I have this resistor to create a voltage divider to give me my measured temperature at this node here. This measured temperature is applied to the inverting input of this operational amplifier. I'm using VREF to compare that to it. it VREF one is applied to the non-inverting terminal. The output of the operational amplifier is applied to the gate of this MOSFET. The source of the MOSFET is tied to the positive terminal of this resistor, so when the output of this operational amplifier goes high, the MOSFET turns on, we start flowing current through the resistor, and the resistor heats up. Once it's heated up enough so that V actual becomes higher than V ref, the output of the operational amplifier goes low, the MOSFET turns off, we stop flowing current, and the resistor should cool to room temperature. Now let's go ahead and apply power to the circuit and watch it operate. In our power supply and voltmeters window, I've set VP plus at 9 volts, VP minus at negative 2 volts. Those are going to provide the rails for the operational amplifier. Since my operational amplifier output is limited to be between those, I should get about from maybe negative 1 to 0 volts up to 7 or 8 volts at the output. I'm using 5 volt fixed power supply to power my voltage divider that gives me my output temperature related voltage, and I'm using VREF1 to apply a desired voltage related temperature. Turning on power, V meter 1 is giving me my measured voltage. It's about 2.8 volts. So this indicates my actual temperature. It is currently above what I want my temperature to be, so 
the overall system is turned off. I'm not getting any current through the MOSFET. This 9 milliamps is close to zero. V-meter 2 is giving me the voltage at the positive terminal of the resistor. That's essentially zero volts. If I increase VREF 1 to above 2.8, say 3.5 volts, Now, VREF1 is higher than my desired voltage. I am getting current flowing through the MOSFET. The MOSFET is heating the resistor, so now I'm up to about 2.9 volts, and my temperature is climbing. Let's reduce this to about 3 and see the system turn off again. Now there's very little difference between my desired and my actual temperature. My current through the resistor has gone back to zero. Now one new thing about this lab assignment is that we want to measure our voltages on an oscilloscope. We have four oscilloscope channels. Channel one, two, three, and four, each of those can be either AC or DC coupled. When you are AC coupling a system, you're only looking for the time varying components. It will tend to remove DC values. Since this system responds extremely slowly, we'll definitely want to keep our DC values here. So what I'm going to do is run a jumper from the positive terminal of the resistor over to the DC coupled channel one of the oscilloscope. Now, if I go back to my main menu and click on the scope icon, a window will open up. We have four possible scope channels, C1, C2, C3, and C4. I've only got C1 turned on. I can view my waveform. This is an old waveform. I can view my waveform in this window. The horizontal grid gives me a time scale. The vertical grid gives me a voltage scale. I can set those scales individually in these two windows. I can change my time scale with this slider button. I'm going to use about 12, volt, 12 seconds per division. Notice that each of these major divisions are now 12 seconds apart. My vertical scale is set by this range. Okay. I'm going to use 2 volts per division. I'm expecting this to go from about 0 to 4 or 5 volts. To start acquiring data, click on the Run icon. This vertical bar will pan past the screen. On the left of this is our voltage at the input of the resistor. Since everything is currently off, I'm getting no voltage across the resistor and essentially no current, which agrees with my power supply window. There's essentially no current going through this until now the resistor has cooled off enough so that the actual temperature is slightly below the reference temperature. It turned on briefly, warmed the resistor up, and then turned off again. If I increase the reference voltage, say to 3.5, now my MOSFET's going to turn on. I'm going to start applying voltage to the resistor until the resistor gets to the stage where it is warm enough so that the actual voltage is higher than the reference voltage. That will take a while because this resistor is fairly heavy. It takes time to warm up. So after a couple of minutes, the resistor has now warmed up so that my actual temperature is at the 3.5 volts that I want it to be at. Now the system should turn itself on and off to maintain that temperature. So at the moment, my actual temperature is slightly above my desired. This should be off. Notice that this thing just keeps screen scanning past the old values. So the resistor is cooling down. After it's cooled down enough, the MOSFET will turn back on, which it has just done. Okay. After the resistor has warmed up a bit, the MOSFET will then turn off again and it will just keep cycling back and forth. The output of the MOSFET is either high voltage or low voltage. There's nothing in between. Okay, now it's gotten warm, it's turned off again. This concludes our introductory lecture for Lab 6.
This lecture, along with the written lab material, should provide you with all the information that you need in order to complete this lab assignment.